All right, YouTube, I got my butt kicked playing standard all weekend. So, uh, sorry, Rob. All right, we, we were a little slow getting out. My wife was, uh, my wife was, um, watching a show. As you see, this is our living room slash stream station. <clears throat> so, so I got my ass kicked playing standard all weekend. I'm going to go back to what I'm good at. This guy's got nine trophies. That guy's doing work. Like how much moto do you have to play? And then also, what does your win rate have to be to win nine trophies? <clears throat> yeah, dude. Happy wife, happy life. Yeah, I got worked. <clears throat> I'm just not, I don't play enough standard, and I'm not very good at the style of, like, of create a, uh, <clears throat> I'm not very good at the style of, like, standard's about, like, playing to a game plan, and I'm used to the game plan changing based on, like, your draw steps and your cantrips. Heater. Jeez. It's a good way to start out tonight. <clears throat> Going down to five. Well, like Thought Scour, two lands, Gourmet Angler. Jesus Christ. All right, I am going to keep and look for a land. Yeah. We're in good shape. <laughs> How's your weekend, Rob? We're actually going to Serum Visions on one for land number two. I hope we're not playing against Burn. All right, so we actually get access to both of those, which is pretty good. So let's put this um, on top. Put this on top. We can shuffle the second one away if we need to, depending on what the matchup is. Arid Mesa. It's not bad. Wisdom Teeth out. That sucks, though. Oh, this is not the Goblin Guide matchup. We get to draw a card. That's the struggle. Um, <clears throat> so we kind of need a threat. So I'm actually going to fetch a basic in Thought Scour. Basically, need to hit Gurmag Angler or Death Shadow like on this turn to be in it. Gourmet Angler would be these. God, I'm so good at this game. Just so good. I probably should have kept the, um, definitely should have kept the discard spell. I got beat up playing standard this weekend. I lost like, I don't know, I bet I, bet I spent like 40 tickets. My constructed rating dropped like 100 points. Mario Tennis, nice. So we kind of have a chance. Like, this Gurmag Angler is kind of going to do work. The problem is we need one more threat in order to start attacking with this. If we start attacking, maybe we're good. My opponent's whole hand just has to be a whole lot of suck, though. This is so gross. Like, I can't even block this thing. <clears throat> but I guess that leaves them with three, four cards in their hand. And we have to deal with this and another card. We have to Thought Seize a card away. This Searing Blaze I'm going to hurl, though. It's probably, yeah, they're fetching a goddamn Searing Blaze. Oh, that's great. Snapcaster. That doesn't do anything. All right, so we're going to go down to six. Fetch a swamp. I'm probably actually just going to cycle this because I need to hit that shadow. All right. All right, so you're saying there's a chance. We're going to stub anything so that we can snap stub it. I've been very lucky saying, like, I need to do this. We're going to let this first one resolve here. 
really want my opponent to cast something on this turn so that I can stub and then snap stub. Like I'm even gonna I'm, I'm gonna counter literally the first spell that I get the chance to, even if it like slows me down a little bit. Like fire your lot, play your lava spike. I was thinking about it. God damn it. I needed them to block. I needed them to play something there more than likely. Maybe they're going to. Nope. Not that lucky. Oh, Jesus. So let's thought seize them. All right, man. First one's good. Second one's not good. <clears throat> All right. Only have one spell. Come on. All right. That's not bad. Holy shnikes, if we win this game, it's going to be just wild. I've almost got like 42 top decks to just kill me here, but <clears throat> this looks like appears to be one of them. Swift Spear into, okay. So I'm not dead. Oh, I am dead. Dang it. That's sad. <clears throat> we had a chance, we almost had a chance to steal one on a mode of five. But like my opponent had a million hits. Any one, any one or two man, like basically the only things that don't kill me are like Rift Bolt, Eidolon, or Land. Even Searing Blaze did it. T's almost ready, Meg. Ah, <clears throat> uh, yeah. So close. Almost stole that. That would have been so sweet. On a mold of five. But wasn't quite lucky enough. Just needed. Uh, what kind would I like? Um, something fruity. We used to have a raspberry one, but I think we're out of that. Yeah. Thank you. Orange? Yeah, sure. All right, I would like to lead off. All right, we'll keep this. So I'm gonna fetch a uh, blood. I'm gonna fetch a blue black, watery grave, bobble them, bobble myself, and then thought seize just to know get as much information as I can before I do this. Is this more or less? It is. It is more Rafi. Our sim stream, we're still working on it. The videos are on YouTube, though. You can there's a video about the build of our sim of our sim characters and sim house, and there's a build about our uh, a little bit of gameplay. Megan's character went to work. My character slacked off. Yes, my wife just said that's very realistic. She's throwing all kinds of shade. Okay, so they're drawing a land. We are drawing... We're drawing a Battle Rage, which is pretty sweet. It's a lot of Eidolons. If I take this Swift Spear, what are the odds that they spike me? Pretty high, hopefully. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Thank you, Meg. 
We need a land or a way to get that shadow into play next turn. So there's Battle Rage. There's a land. Wrong land, though. Spike me. One time. Dude, what a guy. So we're going to hold up Stubborn Denial. Um, also because I want to cast Serum Visions after my opponent gets Eidolon in play to make it larger, my Death Shadow larger. Sounds good. Gonna grow our homeboy. Yeah, you got it. Always yields. So we're looking for a red land. Okay, we found a red land and we found a red spell. But we're not going to be able to cast red spell plus red land in the same turn. So we're going to put this on the... We'll actually probably put both of these on the bottom. So if I go to 5 and attack, if I go to 8 and attack, my opponent attacks me to 6, plays another idol on, and then if I have to stub something, I can't stub it. So I'm going to put them to 14. If I Battle Rage, Battle Rage puts me to... They play the second idol on, and then I battle rage is not enough if I play this tap because it's only 14. That's where they're at. So I almost have to hold my land. Because I don't really want to have to shock right now. So it's gonna put me to eight, put me to five, put me to seven, battle rage. This is tough math. I might have to cast two spells next turn. And if I cast two spells next turn, my other alternative is to just bolt this idol on. But if I put it in tap, Rafi, and he plays an idol on, and then he attacks me, then Plays idol on bolts me and only puts me to one. So yeah, that's the play. You can only put me to one. Well, there's no sense of in uh, hitting the idol on because like, so I put this in tapped. Attack them for three. They hit. Attack them for three. They go to fourteen. They hit me. I could just blow up the idol on also putting me to six. And then we have the stubborn denial. Yeah, that's that's the play. So I don't think they have draws that kill me from there. <clears throat> it just took me a second because there's there's a lot of different ways you could have played that turn. Okay, so my opponent's dead because we knew about that land. So fourteen. Yeah, we just. Hit this. And it ended. It always gets confusing whenever you have to do like double idle on math. Because if I would have just like attacked, not done anything, and they attacked me to two, then I no longer. I dash out in four. I guess it didn't matter. It didn't really matter either way unless they blocked with both of them. So it wasn't super relevant, I guess. And sometimes I get, I get caught up in that. Because <clears throat> I think either way I had them. Unless their hand was like... I don't know, unless I could lock me somehow. So this is a pretty quick Gurmag Angler, which we're all about. I have to go like Fetch Shock Bolt into Looting Angler. So like one, two, five, 
Maybe find a fetch land in order to play the Gurmag Angler. I might still keep this, but we really want to. We really want the turn two Angler. Can can produce it if we get a little lucky. I think. Goblin Guide. Okay. Now I'm gonna push this. I'm gonna save the bolt to maybe bolt them out or something like that. Okay. So I'm gonna get blood crypt. I'm gonna go to ten on this. My opponent's only got three cards left though, so. Hopefully get something off the Eidolon. I guess we'll wait here, see the trigger. I'm going to push this anyways. All right, more cards to loot away with. Okay. Now I just want to Thought Seize them. Play Death Shadow. If I, I go to six, they have two cards. I check their Swift Spear. Yeah, I think I'm going to Thought Season go to six and hope that they don't kill me here. Wish I had fetched a basic, been at save two life. Go off of this star just in case we don't want to. Which is an Inquisition of Kozilek, but. Okay, Path to Exile, Boros Charm. So I've got to take Path. Though I can take Boros Charm, Bolt this. Thought sees them next turn. I go to. Six, and then I go to four and play Death Shadow. If I take this, if I let them, there's so many draws that just kill me. I think I'm going to take Charm and then Bolt this thing. And then try to figure it out next turn. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. I mean, it, it kind of sucks to not deploy a threat here. Jeez. Okay, so they're going to get in for one. All right, Inquisition's a pretty good one because Inquisition doesn't do any damage to deal with this Path to Exile. They might just Path this because they know it's going to get Inquisition. We will probably never see it with Ry with uh, Rhinos there, Roundsley. I played uh, Traverse Shadow or Traverse um, Abzan about a couple months ago. Yeah, it's a good play from the opponent. They basically get in for one more point of damage, save this. It's a good play. Leaves them a couple lethal ones off the top. So one, two, three, four. Looking for Battle Rage. Didn't find it. So let's get rid of this, this and this. Play Death Shadow. A very good play from the opponent there. This is play around deflecting palm. Okay, they missed. It is a little unfortunate that I guess I should have just no that was so stupid that was such a poor play of me to just play around deflecting palm that's why I did it like that 
or like a sorcery because they would have just fired it off and now they can block this. I guess they didn't block, which is pretty, pretty wild. That was a poor play for me though. And I think my opponent's gonna let me get away with it unless they hit a Boros charm. My opponent should have chomped for sure. They are, they can't beat Battle Rage. They should have just chomped to try to give themselves as many draw steps as possible. But I guess they don't know that I can take care of this Swift Spear. So it's just Aaron Mesa, one unknown card. They play their Aaron Mesa, okay. So we just pay full retail and swing in there. We lose to Palm, probably. Lose to three damage burn spell. I guess we don't lose the three damage burn spell. All right. We are lucky there. I don't think we played that very well. I definitely should not have cast that Dismember or that Inquisition. I should have just dismembered the Swift Spear. But worked out all right. I would like to play some – I'm going to play some more decks as soon as I um, – It's after SCG Philly. And as soon as I hit a thousand followers, which you also check up there. That's what we're that's what we're working on. That is the goal of the stream. I think I only need like fifty more. <clears throat> oh, it's hot in here. I guess it's Washington DC though. It's kind of a Kind of terrible down here. Yo, I'm only five views away from 30,000 views on my YouTube channel. Which is pretty sweet. I think I have an Abzan Traverse deck still up. I would probably just play kind of play Kevin's. Yeah, Abzan Traverse right here. I really did like this deck. It was it's my favorite. It was my favorite like mid range deck ever in Modern. I guess Mardu Pyromancer is kind of fun also. Moto's Moto's tweaking out. Moto can't handle it. That's kind of annoying, considering like they put so much resources into that, right? Oh, we're playing against a two-two. We got to be a dream crusher. I will keep this. Got a little bit of everything besides a clock. Okay, playing some fair magic. It's the fourth game that I have just randomly not been able to cast spells. Yeah, that sucks. That's pretty frustrating. Especially when they put so much resources into it and like they haven't put any resources into Moto. But like Moto's don't waste me the finals of the Worcester. Dude, way to go. I'm gonna have to gonna have to ask him how it all went. We're just gonna see our visions on one. Looking for some way to kill Tarmogoyf. Or Grim Flare. I guess we have that. We're looking for a threat. I'm gonna put this on the bottom, put on the top. I played Dalloway's list. Playing its abs and god, this is just absolutely awful. You just gonna jam lingering souls right down my throat and I'm gonna just feel so violated. I think I'm still going to get a watery grave with this. I just want blue. I want blue and I, I don't want red yet. A lot of my red spells will be crap right now anyways. 
right, so we did find that. All right, well, Snapcaster Mage isn't bad. Or the, so we can, like, snap Thoughtseize or snap Inquisition, which I'm kind of all about. Because I don't want to, like, play Death Shadow with Stubborn Denial because, like, they could easily just abrupt to carry this. So let's play Snapcaster. I'm probably going to go with an Inquisition because I don't want to just get randomly, like, hosed by Lingering Souls not being able to deal with them. Yeah, I'm going to take this Liliana. My opponent can decay this and then play Tassiger, which is a little problem problematic, but... Yeah. All right, we don't want any of these. And I think here we're just going to snap, dismember this, um, this Tassiger before my opponent untaps and can activate it. The next turn we can play Death Shadow with double counterspell up. We should be in good shape then. <clears throat> Delve Threats and a Goyf deck combo. All right, Lingering Souls is not good for the home team. My opponent's got Path, Path, X. So Stub, Stub, we can still hit something. <clears throat> So now we're digging for Team or Battle Rage. Team or Battle Rage probably wins the game next turn, unless they've got a way to kill this Shadow. I guess now they can flash back Lingering Souls. Yeah, that's going to be pretty important. I'm going to push one of these to save me some damage. Alternatively, I could push one of the blockers. Because if I find another removal spell or Snapcaster Mage, I just kill them because it's 2, 9. We take 2, this is 9, 11, yeah. So we're going to take this and then push a blocker. Removal spell. Shoot. So now I play my land and ship with both. Just play another Death Shadow and hope my opponent misses. So they have to block. Had a decent amount of outs there. Do you have any Peter and Cure on the sideboard? I don't have any opinion on it. I think it's fine. Like, you know, Brandon Dalloway is a big fan of it. I'm a fan of the way that he plays Shadow. So I think if you want it as part of your plan, you should play it. <clears throat> it's kind of bold. Siege Rhino just kills me. Jeez. So I probably can just eat this Snapcaster Mage. So I might as well just ship in with both of these shadows. They have to block both of them. <clears throat> I think Shadow's favorite against Jeskai, so I think that's fine. There, Mardu's tough because of Lingering Souls. <clears throat> this sucks. 
Because I can go, do I even have a land? If I fetch shock, no, I can't because I have to kill myself. Okay, we're not going to do that. <clears throat> it also blocks Lingering Souls, which helps. Yeah. Lingering Souls is the problem. Liliana doesn't really do anything. Again, we have a million outs here. That's one of them, because that just kills them next turn. So we're going to attack my opponent with both of our Death Shadows. And then we're going to fetch our basic and play the Street Wraith. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Gurmag Angler is your best threat against um Gurmag Angler is your best threat against fair decks. I could have cycled this and actually probably would have been better to cycle it. Yeah, it totally would have been better to cycle it. Because my opponent's dead anyways. Yeah dude. Beats by Wraith. Can't hang with the street Wraith baby. Get some Oh my god. So I actually think so I actually think that it's better when you're playing Death Shadow, okay? Especially in long tournaments to play with Street Wraith. Because I've had sometimes where Street Wraith, like if I'm tired, Street Wraith and Thoughtseize, they look kind of similar. The the Theros the, the Lorwyn Thoughtseize, which I had, and I've actually made mistakes with these cards. So I actually like having um Future Sight Street Wraiths. It does. So we don't want Battle Rage. I want all of my removal. We probably can ditch Street Wraith because of Lingering Souls, and I don't really know what else to take out. And then I think I've got to cut some Counter Spells. While the Counter Spells were good there, they're probably a little... They're a little, um, a little redundant. Not redundant. Um, they're just like a kind of a liability. Oh, did I have the abrade? I didn't mean to click on the abrades. Yeah, the abrade only hits scavenging use or uh, grim flare if they're not delirious, which means I can leave in like a couple counter spells. I do like against a deck like Abzan. I do like counter spells more than discard spells because um, it, you can just hit Lingering Souls, which is important. Lingering Souls is like the best card in the matchup from either side, probably. It's so messed up how how much... <clears throat> I don't think... I don't really like Street Wraith in this, this matchup here because the games go long, and if you do like incidental damage to yourself, all of a sudden like... A top deck lingering souls just kills you, puts you on like a one turn clock. Yeah, this hand's not very good, but I'm gonna keep it. We don't want to mulligan in this matchup. And like sometimes the street wraith beats are necessary, but I want, especially if they're playing Bob. Yeah, but you gotta be able to kill Bob and Tarnaloy from Grim Flare. You know? Like it's not. You you need you need a certain especially if we're gonna cut some discard spells you need a certain amount of answers to Bob on two or that's just gonna run away with the game. You're buying Bulmanir Mage. Well, we're gonna get rid of this Bitter Blossom. Well, I don't know if I'm actually gonna get away with this Bitter Blossom. So I can deal with Bitter Blossom. Really on the Veil is going to be really annoying, but all these cards are annoying. I guess I'm going to take the one they're going to play next turn. Then hope to see your visions into something effective. Yes, but you're not reliably getting to 5 mana, right? In the 17 land deck. Alright, so I'm going to get a Watery Grave. This is probably just about as 
liberal as I'm going to be with my life total. So I kind of want all my cards, so I'm not going to keep this Faithless Looting. I am going to keep this Stubborn Denial, and we're just going to hope to God that my opponent misses on land drops one time. Because we got to counter this Liliana. Yeah. The Liliana is the big prize. One, two, three, four. So we can get we can get nasty into play. Make them maelstrom pulse. Make them maelstrom pulse hit. We're gonna counter Liliana. They can have maelstrom pulse. We're actually we're gonna counter their first play and then use our last hope. All right. And use our last hope to rebuy here. Because Liliana the Veil is so good in these mirrors. So my opponent's Ghost Core is gone. I still know they have Fulminator Mage. I know four of their five cards. I agree, Teddy. Then I can snap stub their next play. We're just going to like Delver it up. They have a path that kind of sucks, but at least we got Liliana the Veil off the, off the table. Jeez, we might actually just like, just get right underneath of them. Just get our Delver on. So I'm going to snap path, snap this, stub this, because I would like them to play mail, to Maelstrom Pulse this so I can rebuy it with Liliana. And then I can have a Snapcaster in play to protect the Liliana. So like we know that our Angler is going away, but this at least makes it so we can rebuy it. We still have a body. Man, Moto's really lagging. I'm going to have to restart Moto after this match. What would I want to ditch? Probably the, sna the Snapcaster Mage isn't great right now. But all my cards are pretty good, so I kind of don't even want to cast this looting. Oh man, we hit a Death Shadow. That was pretty lucky. So we know my opponent has a Fatal Push. So I'm just going to hold back both of my creatures. Because if they go like, if we attack with Snap, they go push land, they can vent away my Liliana. If I can keep this Liliana in play, I should do pretty well. The explosives looks a tad embarrassing. They pushed my Snapcaster Mage. Push that, okay. So they got Fulminator Mage and one unknown. Jeez. So I can Snap Thought sees the Fulminator to be mana efficient. I can ditch like EE. -E. I can ditch like EE -E Bobble. Snap. I can ditch like Thought Seize EE -E, or Thought Seize Bobble. Snap Thought Seize Tick Up. Next turn go Double Death Shadow. Or I could just play Ditch Both of These. Yeah, this is better. Thought Seize Play Shadow. Roll up. Next turn. Roll down, get back Death Shadow, snap Thought Seize, play Death Shadow. Yeah. This is this is what we want. 
Just gonna get this Lily on the Veil out of there. <clears throat> we are just kind of like working our opponent here. Okay. I really want to keep my. Now that we drew that EE, I really want to keep my Liliana around. But I also want a Death Shadow pretty bad. I could just roll it down, go snap Thoughtsies, and then play Death Shadow as well, which is probably good enough. Yeah. We don't want to get this Abrupt Decay. Abrupt Decay kind of gets us no matter what. I could get Gurmag Angler just because that's harder to kill. Like Fatal Push or Abrupt Decay doesn't kill it. Death Shadow's an 8. 8 power. I think Death Shadow is just too, too good. Just puts my opponent in like too awkward of places. I thought he's the full mayor mage. <clears throat> After the thought, yeah. Okay, so we just play land. So let's flash back this looting. Um, how many counter spells? I've used two counter spells. I've got two left in my deck, and I've got four fatal push or bolt. So I'm gonna leave up black red. I might get punished for that, but we didn't. So I don't want this, and then we don't want our land. And we're just gonna serve in with both. <clears throat> yeah. I get what you're saying, Teddy. <clears throat> so my opponent's like stone rating themselves to keep up with me here. Alrighty. I got to restart Moto, so hang on. We're gonna put up my put up this sponsor page. Everybody like the stream. I'm getting close to a thousand followers, which let me do a bunch of cool stuff. So hit hit the follow button. Hit it. If we hit the follow button, if we get how many treasure chests do I have? If we get all the way up and we hit the follow button, we get to a thousand by the end of the stream. I will open all of these treasure chests that I have. I think I've got like 80. So hit the follow button. Hit it. You're not dumb. I'm just I'm just miles ahead, Rob. There's there's a difference. You know. But hit the follow button. Hit the follow button. We get a thousand, and I will open up millions of treasure chests. Got to exit out of some of these. Oh, also, something sweet. I've almost hit 30,000 viewers on my YouTube channel, which is linked here. You should go subscribe to that also. That's free. Yeah, I'm going to Philly, Rob. Dude, I'm so good at night that IQs that it's just ridiculous. I like getting night that IQs and waving my finger at the camera. TG stream right there. 
I'm the gatekeeper. Everyone's good at something. Literally, we need 51 more follows. If I get 51 more follows, I will open up. How many do we got here? I will open up 75 treasure chests. <clears throat> God, I love playing Death Shadow. I like playing Modern. Modern just like... I like playing Modern and Legacy as they kind of just like... They work towards my play style. I'm not very good at Limited and Standard because those are more about like creating plans and following your plans. I like how in Legacy and Modern you pivot more based on your gameplay, but like based on like what you draw, how you cantrip, your sequencing and stuff. That's some solid math there, Teddy. Just saying. Maybe I should update my stream title. Ready? Here's what we'll do. Nice. What seed are you playing there, Rob? Are you playing? You got you. You're, you're playing Teamer Pile, right? You playing Teamer and Standard, dude. You must have loved it when that deck was great. <clears throat> I would like a trophy. I got worked so much playing standard that it would it would be nice to, you know, get that motivation. All right. I mean, I kind of like this hand, but I guess I, I've got disruption, 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 but I have no threat. I don't know. I can do better. This hand's better. Put on top. Carnage Tyrant. I don't think you can go wrong with red black. You talk about the mono red, like the Grixis Chain Whirler deck? Nice. I wonder if that Serum Visions is going to be enough. I mean, it's probably what I probably got to keep it. They're drawing a Ballista. We're just, we're just going to fetch them now before we draw. So we need to hit something like a Thought Scour will be gas. Thought Seize isn't that bad either. So let's, let's fetch Black Red. Okay, so thought sees this is five this is four five thought sees. We can just thought sees for days. I don't really know if I want either of these. I mean I probably want the land. Thought sees next turn. I don't think I want I honestly don't think I want either of these. I think we're looking for Death Shadow, Teamer Battle Rage, and Stubborn Denial. I think we've got like a very... The more... I've been winning more with this deck, the more picky I've become. With my... Um, with my scries and such. So I guess I just take this Karn because it's their only t like effective turn three play. And then this O-Stone's a turn three play. So we know they're drawing Ballista. So six, seven, there's the tower. There's the sphere. There's the sphere. Okay. Jeez. So I'm gonna take this Oblivion Stone. And then we're going to kind of hope 
That's the game plan. Cross your fingers, chat. <clears throat> Expedition map, okay. It's pretty slow. No land. So I wish I had K command in my main deck. So we just take an Ugin and then attack. We're probably going to end up. Hopefully, they play a walking blister. I don't know. They're not probably not going to. That is nice. Yeah, I'm game, Drago. The Death Shadow Mirror is kind of obnoxious. Okay, so there's the mine. Here comes Ballista or Sphere. Okay. Tough camera match. I was watching you guys. So I guess we cycle this to find a stub. Oh, geez, I'm crow. I'm good at this game. <clears throat> we can realistically win here. We have to, my opponent has to not have another, like, big land, big thing, though. So no Ugin. No Ugin, Karn, Worm Coil. I don't know, there's a lot. Which isn't likely. This deck's this deck's so good. It's so redundant. Sylvan Scrying gets them what they need. So you gotta play Ugin and then clear the board. There's his tower. Oblivion Stone also is effective. But then I can play another Gurmag Angler. So how much land do they have? They have got two four ten, so I can't crack my fetch land. Which is actually like pretty important. Because then we just die to the ballista. And I can't dismember because then we die to the ballista. That actually cuts us off quite a few outs. Well that helps. So we can't crack our fetch land because of the walking ballista. They're drawing an all his dust. Uh, maybe we'll hit stubborn denial off of this. This thing because if we don't like play this, they're just going to Ugin and take it up on us. No, we didn't. So now we're dead. And they've got enough mana to just ballista me out anyways. Or that. Or that. This deck is so good, this Tron deck. Like, man. If it wasn't miserable to play, I would think about it. But it is absolutely... I think it's miserable to play with and against. Cut one of these. Cut two bolts. Cut two pushes. And go just like this. <clears throat> yeah, they got Tron. Dude, we still need 51 followers. If we have 51 more followers, I'll open up 75 treasure chests on stream. I want to get to 1,000. I get to start doing more stuff when I get to 1,000. Apply for more sponsorships, stream more decks. Yeah, we're gonna keep this. I'm gonna. This is a Serum Visions on one in order to hit my second land drop, kind of hand. It's gonna take some finesse to get Death Shadow into play. 
Okay, so Bloodstained Mire and Looting are pretty good. So, Fetch Shock. We're going to end up going Thought Seize and then Holding. And then next turn, so we're just going to put on top and then put on top. Yeah, I agree. Tron's a good deck. Like, it's pretty easy to hate on because, like, it's not very much fun. But it is just solid. Ursus Factory. So I'm going to take this Ancient Stirring, or the Sylving Shrine. I would love to be able to go like Gurmag Angler into Death Shadow next turn, but I might not be able to do that. I might have to hold up Ceremonious Rejection and not get Karned. Yeah, that's especially after they hit the third Tron piece. So I'm actually going to get, I'm still going to get Black Red. Well... Yeah, I'm going to get black red. All right, we did hit a land. One, two, three. Okay, so we're going to get rid of the Gurmag Angler, obviously. And then we probably just... We might get rid of this Death Shadow and just be on the Gurmag Angler plan. We have this island, so we can go island, hold up, Rejection to deal with this Karn. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to get rid of Death Shadow. And then Serum Visions is going to dig us to more interaction. Yeah, I think that's the plan. Pass. <clears throat> well, those, those are very good players, also. Like... Those guys, those guys are all very good. I played against Luke and Ben a couple a couple times, like around the local shops, and they're just very good players. That's a really good draw. What does this card even do? Tap seven, create a two two. It's gonna be tough to beat going long. It's gonna hold up Snapcaster. Well, now I pissed away my whole turn. That was a mistake. Yeah, I made a mistake last turn. I just wasn't thinking. Because like now I wasted my whole turn. Um, I don't really want any of these. If you did get rid of Visions, I think Shadow would be better follow-up with Double Rejection. Probably because of this Urza's Factory here. You're right there, Teddy. What cards am I not? I'm probably not interested in this Inquisition of Kozilek, so I kind of want to just go... Put on the bottom, put on top, because I'm probably going to ditch this next turn. Wow, they, have, they got nothing going on. Now they just make a block. Yeah, because of this, the stupid assembly worker. And Luke's top eight in GPs before. Like, Luke is, Luke's the man. Now, the, the hard part here is I can ghost quarter my blue source and move through combat. One, two. All right, so we're going to have to snap thought seize that bad boy. I guess I couldn't do that because of that thing there. So attack first, then snap thought seize. I mean, at least we have a second threat on the board. We have to hope that they miss on a top deck. There's just so many ways this goes bad. This Urza's Factory is really good. At least we're going to be able to crack them probably next turn for a decent amount of damage. Well, they don't have anything. They're just going to continue making these and just chumping my angler.
Delray beat Ben, which was is quite the uh, quite the feather in Delray's cap. My opponents, at least they're my opponents, drawing like shit, giving us a chance. <clears throat> Okay, Relic's pretty good. All right, thank you to those two for the follows there. Now what do we need? We need 49 more. What they play? They played their tower. Start off here. Jeez. The Inquisition's not worth anything, and there's a chance that shocking off of the steam vents might be good anyways. So what we're going to do is we're going to ditch these two. One, three, six, eight. They could have played an Ulamog if they drew it. So we're going to look at my opponent's top of their deck. If their top card's like a dud, then we're just going to flash back the looting and get ready for next turn. Their card's a dud. Okay, so let's attack, and then we're just going to flash back looting. I guess I don't really want to do that because I don't want to get rid of my rejection. So we're not going to find I'm just going to shock myself because I might want what, – what is a realistic play next turn? I might want to hold up like land plus faithless looting plus play death shadow. So I am going to shock myself so that if I draw a land – into a one mana card, I can play it. Okay, Street Race, not bad. Yeah. And Delray is great. Very good player. All right, Sanctum of Eugene. Come on, don't do it to me. I'm going to cycle, what's the opportunity? If I cycle this now, I can hit Thought Scour. Um, I can hit Snapcaster Mage, but I'm not going to flash in. I could hit Thought Scour, so I am going to cycle this now. I don't think this is actually going to be a relevant body. K Command is not bad. So I'm just going to return my, well, hang on. I can shock a token and then still have Ceremonious Rejection up for next turn. Like shock token, return Snapcaster Mage. Oh man, we are just one mana off there. Do this, return Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, I think I'm just going to shock this, return Snapcaster Mage. Return target creature card from your graveyard. Return Snapcaster Mage. Shock this. I could do the Street Wraith, but then I'm dead to like a... But I got Ugin covered, so maybe I want to get the Street Wraith. What does the Street Wraith do for me? The Street Wraith doesn't really do a lot. I think just having the Snapcaster Mage is probably better. So return... Return Snapcaster Mage. Shoot this. Black, red, one. My opponent's hand is just like, you know, whatever. We're not beating anything out of my opponent's hand. Rage, then burn two. Is also is also a thing, yeah. That probably would have been decent because that beats something like Ulamog off the top. That would have been a good play, Teddy. Or runs with beers. That would have been a very good play. Probably was better than the one that I did because that beats Ulamog. All right, got it. Snap locks up another rejection as well, but I think running with beers play was better. Everybody in the chat, hit the follow button. We'll open up 
75 chests on stream if we get to 1,000. What are we even at? We're only at 950. So sad. Why does my stream say 951, though? It's so confusing. We're trying to run it back the same way. That's a very odd game to win. Not gonna lie. I mean, our opponent drew like 48 lands. That Mitra's work, that Mitra's thing did some serious work, though. <clears throat> this game's got like. These three cards, these four cards are really good. And we have a redraw. We're on the draw. I'm going to keep this hand. I really don't like keeping sevens without a threat. But I think that, like, this enables Gurmag Angler. This is a redraw. That, and these two cards enable Death Shadow. And these cards are just great. That I am going to keep this. And, like, my opponent mulliganed, which is going to make Dot Seizing on one even better. In a little five. Jeez. Why wouldn't you just battle rage for the win there? I, I I just wanted to play the land just in case, Ronnie. Like I probably was going to battle rage, but it gave myself more options. How are you doing, Ronnie? How's the show there out west? Alright, um, I'm gonna hold my Street Wraith because if I draw Serum Visions, then Street Wraith is a good uh good pair with that. Which is a tip in general when playing this deck. You want to just hold your Street Wraith for as long as you can. And they put a card on top of their library. So they're going to have Tron. So probably just take this. I kind of want to take Relic and Progenitus. Cause, and then next turn I can take Ancient Stirrings. Because I don't want them to play Relic and then nuke my Graveyard. <clears throat> yeah, you're right there, Ronnie. Like, that's probably what I would have done, but... Okay, so doing this right now. So we know my opponent's hand. All right. Land. <clears throat> yeah, he was dead. He was dead. So I really want to thought seize this ancient stirrings, though my opponent's gonna play Tron and they're gonna do a bunch of things, and the ancient stirrings only hits if they get exactly worm coil engine. But they're gonna get like one, two, three draws at worm coil engine. So actually, I think if I'm gonna thought seize, I'm gonna take the chromatic sphere. And alternatively, I can just hit ceremonious rejection and thought scour, which is probably better. Because thought scour gives me a redraw. Out of land for next turn. <laughs> Living the Ronnie K life. Don't be a Thrag Tusk. Don't Thrag Tusk me. So they played this, they played this. This card is absolutely egregious. So they probably drew a Karn, because they went to go tap all their mana, and then it didn't work. So I'm going to assume my opponent's got a Karn in their hand. Jeez. Yeah, we're just going to pass. Right, we'll do another bobble, the slow trip. And Grix's Shadow, nice. Alright, get out of here. So they played, what'd they do? They played their forest. God. Just gonna keep keep the redraws coming. Worm coil engine. Alright, well that's getting rejected. This is the one annoying part about Bobble. Like, you want Bobble in your opening hand, but Bobble not in your opening hand is not good.
Come on. Oh, Jesus. All right. Come on, baby. All right, so there's Death Shadow. Um, put this on the bottom. Put this on the top. So we have a plan. Now we have to discard just to get rid of the stupid Colagons command. And we're dead. I guess we're not exactly dead. Though I can't fetch a red source. <clears throat> because if I fetch a red source, we go to eight, we take two, a braid. I guess we actually can live here. So I do have to go fetch a red source. Get a blood crypt. Opponent cracks me for six. We let that go. Stub their play. Really hope they don't have a follow up. Worm coil engine or creature. God. Going out on my own terms. That was a tough game three. And maybe I should have mulliganed my opening hand. But, I don't know. I mean, we saw the opening hand was pretty decent. I mean, it kept, like, it didn't hit lands. But, like, it defended us well enough. Which was pretty great. But it didn't end up getting us all the way there. So maybe I should have just been an adult and mulliganed. But I thought that had the tools that I needed besides a threat, I guess. And land. So maybe I had a Colagon's Command on one land with a cantrip and a street wraith. I have a cantrip, thought scour, street wraith. I think I had stub. I had land, thought scour, street wraith, stub. Rejection, rejection. That's a pretty, I mean, I'd keep that on a six. Doesn't really matter what the next card is. So how are, how are Denver sports teams looking this year, Ronnie? All right, we're going to keep this hand it's on the borderline. <clears throat> Playing against Infect. Hand is not good against Infect. So we're going to get black red. Uh, I should have just street wraith first. I, I sometimes I get like too worried about the percentages of drawing a discard spell or a bull. I should have just like, yeah, see now I'm just like stupid. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I got to thin out my deck before I do that. And it just kicks me right in the sack sometimes. Which is my mistake. Just not playing like super into it. I'm gonna be at Philadelphia. Worcester's a little little bit of a hike for the home team. Alright, well at least Gurmag Angler is gonna be a pretty good blocker. But see, I would be able to play Gurmag Angler with stubborn denial up here if we, you know, had it going on. Alternatively, I could just play Death Shadow and hold up Stubborn Denial because, like, my opponent attacks with, like, the Ink Moth Nexus. Then, yeah, I'm going to do this. Because if they attack with Ink Moth Nexus, Stub is actually going to get something. And I can, like, trade my Death Shadow for a Pump Spell, which I think we're in the market for. And then I can, um, at the end of the turn... I can Thought Scour and then play Gurmag Angler with Double Stubborn, Double Stubborn Denial up. 
So what would be best for us if they just fired up this ink moth nexus. Okay, they're gonna dismember the death shadow. Okay, you got it. No blocks. What do you got? Alright. So now we can Thought Scour ourselves, play Gurmag Angler, shock ourselves. And then have double counter spell up, which we're gonna need removal spells, which that's a good one. We have a dismember in the yard too, which is nice. So we're gonna eventually be able to go snap dismember. I'm gonna hold that. Because we might want to go snap dismember, and that's gonna like strain the life total a little bit. We don't want to go too low against this deck. I mean, like, I don't want to just end up randomly dead to like a noble hierarch pumps. Blighted agent's not good for the home team. A lightning bolt would be really good. <laughs> okay, we're, gonna, we're just going to get a tap land here. Probably, uh, only, well, we're going to get a blood crypt. So, like, limits our shadow size, but our shadows are going to get large anyways. I really haven't looked at it too much, to tell you the truth, Ronnie. All right, well, just immediately punished. So I think I'm going to attack with Gurmag Angler, because, like, this block's here. We've got double counter spell. We've got three cards in their hand. We can snap Dismember at the end of the turn. I think it's about time to start turning, getting nasty sideways, putting the pressure back on our opponents. Because then all of a sudden, next turn... This Death Shadow has them in the abyss. This is like one of those really sweet spot matchups in Modern where all of your cards are good. Like, your counter spells are pretty good, your discard spells are pretty good, and your removal is pretty good, which tends to make this a decent matchup. Sometimes you get wrecked after sideboard by Invisible Stalker, though. Like, if they land an Invisible Stalker, it's just good night, Irene. Like that, that's like most of the time, whenever I lose to Infect, it is when they draw their invisible stalkers. I have a hard time believing my opponent's gonna be able to kill me through two counter spells here. But weirder things have happened, I guess. Okay, here comes Ink Moth. All right, so we're going to snap dismember the blighted agent. We could snap dismember one of these, but I don't think it's going to resolve because of this. And I would rather, they're going to have to chump block these away anyways. Because we're going to attack with all three of our creatures, which means they're going to have to block the Gurmag Angler and the Death Shadow. Not gonna pay. All right, well, we're not gonna, we're gonna shock ourselves, but we're not going to um, cast that because we just want a double counter spell. So you gotta block both of these here. Got to block, dude. Yep. So now it's like if my opponent can kill me through double negate, like, 
you know, you got it. They have to, they have to like, they have to use some of their mana to pump to get this Ink Moth in in combat, which isn't gonna be, which is gonna be kind of hard. It's probably gonna need quite a few mutagenic growths. So that is enough. So let's stub this. What do you got, man? Now they're going to be tapped out of green here. If they go for anything else. Nice. Those are on chump block duty. So I can looting, or I can serum visions and look for a specific card, put it on top, and scry, and then looting, which is what I'm going to do. Okay, Snapcaster isn't it. Serum visions isn't it. Get those. So now we're finding less cards. Oh, we found Bolt. Got to ditch it, though. Keep this stub. <clears throat> you got serum there, Ronnie. Yeah, I wanted serum visions to like give myself three, give myself basically three looks at a specific card that I can faithless looting into or draw into. You got it, man. You're gonna have to have two plus four plus fours in order to get me here. No blocks. Get out of my face. You got me, dude. All right. Guys, we got to keep the follows coming here. I'm going to open up all my treasure chests when I get to 1,000. Before I blow them all playing standard. Okay, so I actually like cutting a lot of these Gurmag Anglers in this matchup. And I like cutting Teamer Battle Rage because the other cards I have are just way better. Like these Last Hopes, these EEs are good. And the Lava Mancers and the Abrades are all good. Because Abrade just kills Ink Moth Nexus without it being damage based, which is nice. Um, I like to kind of transition into a little bit more of a control deck because you don't really need a lot to kill them. And with all my cards being good, I just want to land like a Liliana. Or a Lava Mancer. Because, like, this card basically wins me the game. This card basically wins me the game. And then Death Shadow wins me the game. <clears throat> Spooky Lava Man. <laughs> yeah, I, I like to board very slow in this matchup. Because if you get over aggressive, you put yourself into, like, tough spots. And I like to board my Battle Rages out because I only have four Death Shadows. So we're going to go, I'm actually going to cut a stub and bring in an angler because, again, we only have four death shadows to turn them on. And we don't want to be, like, four spiking this infect deck. Lava Man's very good here. How you doing, Nameless? I usually don't either. The only times that I get beat up... Yeah, you side differently. The only time... I lose to Infect when I get hit by Invisible Stalker. When they Invisible Stalker me after sideboard, that's what gets me. Like, I can deal... Like, if they're on the Geist plan, I can deal with Geist. But, like, the Invisible Stalker is what the real problem is. 26-0. Wow. I don't really like this hand. I don't have a removal spell. I don't have a discard spell. I'm going to ship this. 
This hand's not great, but I don't think I'm going to mulligan it. I'm going to put this on the bottom. You have to punt or see stalker. That's basically it. You like just one Liana? I can see that. It is like like right here. It's not great. It's certainly much better on the draw, on the play. Excuse me. No, see, I like two EEs because I'm scared shitless of Invisible Stalker after sideboard. Because like, you just can't interact with that card. It's a very odd keep for them. Fatal push. I think, unfortunately, I do have to shuffle this away. Yeah. I agree with that. We're just going to do this now to save, to get the, uh, get the value. Okay, we're going to yield until next end step. And hopefully I get to fire this dismember off. I really hope they don't go like Shaper Sanctuary on me here. So if they had the Sanctuary, they would just let it with it on turn one. See, there it is. There is the Stalker, baby. This Invisible Stalker makes me want to keep Battle Rage in my deck. But that's that's kind of stupid, I guess. <clears throat> so now we're just digging for lands, first of all. All right, so now we can get nasty at least. So probably just fetch a basic. Like we're on we're on like save our life total ways game plan here. Apostle's blessing. That's another card that's going to be tough to beat. Well, might want that Snapcaster Mage. Though I doubt we're gonna have the time to. Well, we can snap back Inquisition, but like we have to get rid of. We have to delve the Inquisition. Yeah, I'm just gonna. I don't really know what this is gonna do. I guess I'm better off just trying to find another Snapcaster than trying to K command back a Snapcaster. But it is just something that I can put on the on the battlefield, so I think we're gonna try that out. Stay with one TBR. All right, well, if they get frisky, we can play a Shadow. All right, they're getting frisky. Am I just dead? Are they just going to, like, one-shot me here? All right. Down three. They have an Apostle's Blessing and then one other card. This makes me also want to play more like stubborn denials if this is their game plan. This deck should play Battle Rage. With Battle Rage in your Infect deck, you don't even need that many spells. We're going to put that in play tapped. In case anyone was wondering. Yeah, I mean, we're just going to attack. Play this. Maybe because they have this Invisible Stalker, I should sideboard differently. But I don't actually know how many Invisible Stalkers they play. It's like one Blossoming Defense gets me, yeah. Like, maybe I want more counter spells. Because, like, this makes me want to have more counter spells. So, like, I think I only got two stubs in after sideboard because of how I boarded. So, I'm pretty sold on these. Pretty sold on these things right here. These K command, but the, like all these three drops are so much better on the play though. Let's move this over here. 
Yeah. I just wonder if I want to change anything. You cut a serum visions. If I was going to cut a cantrip, I'd probably cut like a thought scour because I only got one Gurmag Angler. I do kind of want one more counter spell. The problem is my counter spells only really work with my Gurmag Angler, so maybe I just want one Battle Rage. I could go something like this. All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go with the one Liliana. We're gonna try that because, like, I I just want to be. I want to have more game against the invisible stalker plan. I think. Yeah. Because like that's how that's how they beat this deck. That makes sense, Magic Hero. You are speaking you are speaking some of the language. Who would like to play first? Yeah, this hand's pretty good. Like we got disruption, disruption. We can we have quite a bit of dig. We have to bobble ourselves here. Check out our top card. Shuffle it away if we don't want it. I do think we want this on the play, especially after we strip some of their like hexproof spells. Yeah, something like this. So I think this is a pretty straightforward blossoming defense. Because if we want, if we want to play this Liliana, I want to take defense, and then I definitely want to take Blight, our blossoming defense at some point. So I'm going to do that now. Leave my options open for my plays next turn. So let's look at my top card here. If I want it, I'll just keep it, and then I will um, don't want that. Actually, I do want that. So I'm just going to draw that, and then Thought Scour at the end of the turn. None of these really matter. I kind of just want to take this ground swell because it's the most damage. Because we're just going to smoke this blighted agent. Yeah, I'm just going to take this ground swell. Oh, I hate it when I don't do when I don't do this. I'm going to pass. Get our third land. Then fetch watery grave. Maybe I should have boarded out of Faithless Looting. This is why, like, sometimes I don't like Faithless Looting after sideboard. Because, um, like, your deck's so much better overall high quality because you've got out all your bad cards. Like, all the mid-range decks in Modern have this issue where they just draw the wrong half of their deck. Okay, Stub's decent. If we find Shadow, not. Nah, it's going to be a looting target. That's a really good draw. So hit up on this. So we're in pretty good shape now. Because like they might have to use their entire turn to ink lock me. To kill this uh, ink moth, I mean. They might have to use like a quite a bit of their resources. Big Verdant Catacombs. So we know two out of the four cards in their hand. Might growth growth. Jeez. They're getting in while they're getting in is good. So now we just got to hold up here. Because we can't tap out of red, I don't think. I could have rolled. Maybe I should have rolled. I should have definitely. I didn't see this Gurmang Angler. I should have rolled back a Gurmang Angler. That was a huge punt. It was definitely a punt. Definitely a huge pun on my part. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it right this turn. I made a mistake there. I should have definitely rolled my this back to get a threat. 
because it turns on my stubborn denial also. So, and now all we want is a second land drop, because if we get a second land drop, then we a second red source we can play this um, lava man out, and it's likely to win us the game. Thought scour. Not to mention that it's a fetch land. It's like this is getting dismembered. We're just going to let it get dismembered because we can rebuy it. Because, like, how this is going to play out is my opponent goes, like, animate attack, then. Well. Yeah, I think we're just going to let this go. We can just get it back. <clears throat> Best draw next turn will be a fetch land. If we drew fetch land, that would be great. Noble Hierarch, okay. So we're going to go for the kill, I think. So we actually can confidently just get this, kill this thing right now, because we have Stubborn Denial to force spike whatever they're doing. So we're going to get this on the stacks. We beat Mutagenic Growth, stub whatever they got, then uptick here. They just don't have anything going on. And then that gives us an opportunity to play our Lava Mancer. And playing the hierarchy cost them, and now the game's now the game's likely over unless they draw invisible stalker. Now the game's over. Because I don't really want to even do this, so I'm just going to play this out. I just want all my cards here. So I don't think it's a really a good way to lose this. This game's likely over. I'll roll down, get Gurmag Angler. Inquisition. Might as well just cast that. Okay, it's become immense. It's dangerous. Um, oh, wow, we have two Snapcaster Mages also. That is great for the home team. So let's get rid of Inquisition, Inquisition, one Snapcaster Mage, one Stubborn Denial, and probably Serum Visions and Lightning Bolt. And then we're just going to like pass here. I'm not really, especially with this Engineered Explosives, like I might just run this out on two just to have it out there. I think I'm going to. I should have attacked because I'm not minusing on either of these. I'm all over the place. Shaper Sanctuary, okay. We should be able to outpace that. Should have snug them. Like, again, I'm all over the place here. It's not really going to end up mattering, I don't think, but you need to like, tighten it. I need to just tighten it up. We have navigated myself into a position where we're, we're all set. Put on the bottom. Put on top. Tick up. There's just no need to throw it away. You gonna become immense, my Gurmag Angler, dude? <clears throat> just played. I just played a little sloppy there. Like I played well to like get myself to navigate into the position, but now I'm just like not closing it. It is hard. Yeah. It is difficult. I've done it for a year. I'm about a, I'm a little more than a year. I'm about 15 months into streaming, at least twice a week. I enjoy it a lot. I actually I did it to uh, to help out on my um, on my speech 
and uh, work on for training and stuff. So like speaking into a audience. Because I used to say like and um a lot, and I still do kind of. But I've been working to mitigate that. My my like speaking has definitely uh, or my speech has definitely gotten better since I started doing this. Um, Chug and HS, thank you very much for the follow. Yeah. Mm hmm. Would like to play first. This hand is okay. I'm gonna keep it. But we're gonna we're just gonna go Blood Crypt Faithless Looting on turn one. And I'm going to bobble before I do this because I want to actually I'm gonna bobble myself because I could hold stubborn denial up. Or I could bobble my opponent to determine what they're looking for. Let's see what's going on here. Watery grave. We definitely don't want a watery grave. So let's just go. Blood Crypt Looting. All right, so one, two, three, four, five. Fetch land six. So if we go like this, then we've got Gurmag plus Stubborn Denial up for next turn. <clears throat> you like nugging that turn one discard spell? I like doing that if I know I'm playing against a combo deck. If I'm playing against a combo deck. Um, so yeah, I get what you're saying there. I usually always falter onto because like in a hand like this I know what I need. Now looking back it would have been nice to have the turn one stubborn denial to hit this serum visions. I'm gonna assume we're playing something like Storm. And if we are playing something like Storm, I'm actually gonna um thought seize them because I would like to hit a bear. And it allows me to play Death Shadow next turn and have um and have Stubborn Denial up. Yeah. So they put one put one card on the top of their library. So it's a land. Now they have two bears. So this is a little unfortunate. So I could just take this Brawl. Or I can take Dig and try to kill them quickly. Yes, loot was good in this place. Yeah, we're, we're, we're getting nasty on this turn. I really just want to take, like, this Serum Visions or something like that. Because my opponent's hand is so redundant and just try to kill them quickly. Like, just not give them the opportunity to, like... But if I've, I've got, like, six removal spells in my deck that would be pretty good, that I get rewarded for big time if I take a bear. So I think I'm going to take a bear. Um, I'm actually going to leave, I'm going to delve the Faithless Looting and leave the Thought Scour in. Leave the Thought Seize, because, well, I guess the Remand, it's not good, but if we draw a land next turn, we can Thoughts, we can, um, Thought Seize them if we need to, if we determine that's the right thing to do, because this is definitely a land. They kept the card on top. Yeah, so there's the Goblin. Jeez, that's like the absolute nut. Which member? Dismember. That was a good draw. That was like a really fantastic draw. But this is also just like a really nuts. Yeah, and that was absolutely that was like that was the best draw in my deck. I mean, this matchup's also very good for us. But that was just like an absolute, wow, they didn't even hit a land. So if I hit a fetch land, I kill them. So what does that do? That leaves them one short, but likely unable to do anything. That makes it so they can't crack a fetch land, which even cuts off more of their draws. So we're going to fire this off. Um, 
I would like to take one of their one mana spells. So they cast a two mana spell and die. So let's just take the Serum Visions. So now we've cut off like fetch lands, pain lands. <clears throat> yeah. And this is why this deck was good, right? For so long. Because, like, you just, these spell based combo decks just, like, do not, just have, like, no, no chance against them. We had a very fortunate draw, but still. So we want these. And I like cutting just some of my removal here. I like to cut, like, these, these three. Because they turn into like a good empty deck after sideboarding. I also like my spell bombs, but I usually don't know what to cut for them. I don't want to cut too many cards. Like the odds are we don't need like a Snapcaster. And I like I always kind of like shaving one Gurmag Angler against decks that don't really kill Gurmag Angler. And if we draw multiple Gurmags and they remand one, then it's not good. Like Snapcaster is kind of slow. I would rather just be be fast and be quick. Small things. I think there's an argument for the Manamorphos being taken out of visions. Yeah, I mean Manamorphos is their best card, Teddy. I just I just wanted to have them I wanted to have them cast Manamorphos so that uh Um I, I wanted to have them cast Manamorphos so they use two mana. That's what we're going to do here. Uh, any tips for somebody who is just picking up and learning this deck? The biggest tips to learning this deck is to understand how to sequence your Street Wraiths, your Mishra's Bobbles, and your Cantrips. Like, um, you got to learn how to sequence your Cantrips, in my opinion. Um, um, then after you learn how to sequence your cantrips, you've then got to figure out how to like, how do I say this? You've got to figure out when or how to juggle your life total. And then once you learn how to juggle your life total, sequence your cantrips and juggle your life total, you're good. It is, there is a very high learning curve deck. I'm going to mulligan this hand. I don't have a way to get like Gurmag Angler into play quickly. And Stub is fine. But I don't have a discard spell, so I'm pretty weak to a bear. This hand is turned on if I get like. This hand's very turned on if I draw Thought Scour, but I'm not a fan of this hand here. Yeah. Alright, I like this hand much better. I really like this card in this matchup, and I think we can find our second land. This just saves me from so many issues. I mean, yeah, KCI is just... KCI is just nuts. Like, that's the best deck in Modern, if you can figure out how to play it. Like, I played I played a league against KC, a match against KCI earlier, and it was just, like... It was so, so... Um, it was really close, and it shouldn't be close. You would think a deck like KCI would just get completely destroyed against Death Shadow. So I'm going to get blue. I think I'm going to get black-red. Because I want to be able to cast my Faithless Looting if I need to. Yeah, it's definitely on the upswing. There, Tony. It just takes a lot of reps. Like, it's a very difficult deck to play. Oh, it's my hand. My opponent's hand sucks. Okay. I thought they boarded out Gibson given in matchups like this and just brought in pieces of the puzzle. I actually think you're favored against a lot of the control decks, besides blue-white. Humans is tough. All right, so let's do this first, because we can easily ditch this bobble. And like this Snapcaster Mage. 
Oh, that's the wrong land. Uh, yeah, I'm going to ditch Bobble and Snapcaster Mage. Cycle. There's Scalding Tarn. We're going to really hope my opponent didn't hit like a natural grape shot here. Or Lightning Bolt. Yeah, I mean, that was a, I, th I think that was a pretty clear mulligan, right? And we might get punished here, yeah. I mean, they repealed it. Okay. That's not a terrible play, I don't think. I think way too many people get cute with Death Shadow and they don't, like, deal with things when they need to. Just in, in general, Magic players tend to hold all their spells until, like, the last minute. And I think that it gets them into a lot of trouble. Oh, this was so stupid. I know they have Gifts Ungiven. Oh, that was so loose. That was so bad. We're going to put this on the bottom. Put this on top. Yeah, I, I was just like talking zoned out there. I think your favorite against Jess Guy, as soon as you understand how to... Like, the cards that matter are Supreme Verdict and Search for Escanta. And then after that, you just outspell them. Like, they're casting four and five mana spells. You're casting one and two mana spells. Yeah, see, and I could have avoided this. Definitely could have avoided this. This is just like my, a punt on my part here. Because I was just chatting. I'm something like, in the next, in the last, like, I don't know, two weeks, I'm something like 10 and 2 against Jeskai. Can't beat Blue White Control at all, but just absolutely stomp um, Jeskai. So we're going to get rid of the two best cards. Now, part of that's because Jeskai isn't building their deck to beat Death Shadow at the moment. So I kind of want to just pop this bomb now. but Or I could wait for them to cast Past in Flames, and then as soon as I cast the next spell, then get it so I get the Past in Flames as well. Yeah, dude, you can't beat Blue White. Yeah, I'm, I'm something... Well, the Past in Flames is in their hand, right? They don't really want to stub it either. I just kind of want to pieces. So they have op, sleight of hand, island, pass, and flames, one other card. I think this is worth stubbing. And now we don't have anything going on. So I think at the end, I think I'm going to just cycle this because we're out of options here. I think part of the reason I'm doing well against Chess Guy right now is because they aren't like necessarily gearing their sideboards. Um, was I out of Kira? Yeah. Well, I mean, Kira's not that great against Blue White, right? Because they're much more they're much more uh, verdict heavy. But I, actually, I guess I can see that helping out. We're just gonna do this now. I, I need some action. All right, well, that's, like, not quite action, but it's something. Like, one of the biggest skills that I learned after playing Death Shadow was you have to identify what matters in each matchup, and you have to know, jeez. I probably should have Faithless Looting, because if I hit a fetch land, I kill them. I guess it doesn't really matter. Put on top, put on top. Do I have a steam vents? Yeah. Um, they still have spears and paths, yes. You have to understand what matters because your deck's like not very good in the late game and you have to basically counter or discard spell everything that really matters and you have to let go of the things that don't matter. And then once you figure out the things that do matter, like that is the biggest level up to playing Death Shadow is just understanding like in every single matchup what cards beat you. Um it's 1045. I guess I can jump in for one more. How many fall oh, how many loses did we hit? God, you guys are all weak. One, two, three, four, five. Who's streaming right now? Alright, I'm gonna jump in for at least part of another league here.